Hi, Kathy. Hi, Erica. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Hi. Hi. Hi, Anna. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Hi. Good to see you guys. Nice to see you. Nice we to have see you. a good amount of people joining us. So Amazing. we can start. So we can start. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna from Green Geeks, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Why Hackers Target Small Business Websites and What You Can Do About It, by our guest speaker, our friend, Kathy Dent, WordPress security expert. I will introduce you, Kathy, in a moment, but we're so happy to have you. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, real quick, I wanted to say a couple of words to all of you who are joining us and may not be familiar with Green Geeks. We're a 300% green energy web hosting provider, which essentially means we put back three times the amount of power we produce into the grid in the form of renewable energy. And we have been, been recognized by the US CPA since 2009 as a green power partner. And we offer share hosting, reseller hosting, VPS, and dedicated servers. Now, moving on to some important items. <laughs> If you have any questions, uh, you come up with questions during the presentation, if you could please put it in a Q&A and Kathy will be answering them at the end of the presentation. You are welcome to chat in the chat room, but remember to select everyone if you want everyone to see what you're discussing. And as always, uh, as you know, we re we're recording this and we will be sending you a recording in a couple of days and also will be available on our YouTube channel as well. And finally, we have enabled live transcription for this webinar. So you have the ability to enable them uh, by going to live transcript and then show subtitles. Uh, we have here from Green Geeks today, Erica, Erica Barbosa. She will be assisting us with the chat and the Q&A. Erica, do you want to say hi? Thank you, Emma. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Barbosa. I am from Costa Rica. Today, I'm going to be in the chat, reading your comments and sharing some information. And I hope you learn a lot with Kathy and have fun today. Thank you. <laughs> and so, Kathy, um, well, I've known Kathy for a long time. I feel like it's a long time. Uh, we've been friends. I consider you a friend. Yes, um, definitely. Meeting many, many times, many, many years and many work camps. But... Uh, Kathy is an internationally recognized speaker on security marketing and data-driven website development. As I mentioned, she's spoken at countless events worldwide, both online and on stage. She's been an organizer for WordCamp Phoenix twice and WordCamp US. A frequent guest on numerous podcasts about WordPress and emerging technology. She's also co-host of the Cat and Speed, Do the Woo, WP Motivate, and she's a frequent co-host on This Week in WordPress. Also an executive producer of Open, the open source documentary about the WordPress community. She's passionate about your stories and believes everyone's voice deserves to be heard. So welcome, Kathy. Would you like to say hi? Yeah. And, and start your presentation? Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, th this is what, like maybe the third time that I've yes. come on your webinars. And it's always, always a great crowd and always something to talk about and you know hackers gonna hack I mean Taylor Swift should probably write a song about it because they <laughs> haters are gonna hate and hackers are gonna hack it's just something that's part of our world and I'm here to help you defend your site and defend yourself from the attackers that are kind of that background noise on the internet so I do have a presentation here let's I'm trying Canva for the first time so hopefully um, it says my screen sharing is paused. Is there something on the admin side? Zoom is telling oh. me. Mm -hmm. I don't, we never have a problem with screen sharing. Um, um, let me try, let me try this again. Let's see. Um, one more time. Come on, Canva. It worked in my test. <laughs> I'm going to try it one more time. Let's see. I'm going to do presentation. 
and then we're going to go to Zoom, and then we're going to go find the audience window and share that. Yes. Okay. I see there something. There we go. We awesome. Something. All right. So it's still there? Yes. Awesome. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> There's my AI generated headshot there. That's like not actually me. AI generated that, but I'm like, ooh, I look dangerous. I look like I'm ready to handle some hackers there. So we're going to go with it. Thanks, AI. All right. So I've, <laughs> I've been around the WordPress space for a while. Before WordPress even, I was a developer. And the very first server that I ever inherited from a technical person got hacked. And that sent me down down this path of learning about security and how important it is. Uh, that was like back in 1999 that I actually had that experience. And since then, um, I didn't start cleaning hacked WordPress sites until 2016. But since then, I've cleaned well over 3,000 WordPress sites. Um, there were a few way back in the day, but the majority of them have been fairly recent. I've been to DEF CON. I'm now director of marketing at Cadence WP, which is a suite of plugins and tools. It's a theme, doing cool things with WordPress. And I also get to talk about security a lot because I'm over at Stellar WP. There's also a security product there. So I get to play with security while also focusing on the latest and greatest emerging technology in WordPress. So you can check that out. I also have a newsletter that's linked um, here as well, kathyzant.com. There's the newsletter and my site, Zant dot com. Um, but let's talk about these hackers and this sort of background noise on the internet. You know, everybody jokes that it's either this advanced persistent threat, this group of Chinese hackers that are getting into things, or it's a guy in the wearing a hoodie in his mom's basement that's hacking into sites. And the answer is like somewhere in between. Hackers aren't necessarily, you know, the guy in the basement or the advanced persistent threat trying to hack into the CIA. It's somewhere in between. It is a hacker that is essentially motivated by profit. So we're going to talk about what they're up to, what they're trying to do. And then we're going to give you some implementable tips that you can use right away to start making your security posture easier. Um, they really want your site because of the resources. It's your site, your site is an asset, right? So it's it's a server that's got RAM and it's got a hard drive and it's hooked up to the internet. And if you've been taking care of it, it has a strong reputation in the search engine result pages. You know, Google pays attention to who you are and all of that is very valuable for a hacker that is interested in either spreading malware, phishing for credentials, putting spam out on the internet or any other type of thing, malicious mailers. They always seem to put a few back doors in there as well so that they can regain access to your site if you discover what they're up to. But ultimately, the bottom line of all of this, they are looking to make money off of your site's uh, server resources and your site's good reputation. And we're going to stop them from doing that. But why are they after your site, why your WordPress site? You know, I've heard plenty of people come up to me at WordCamps and whatnot saying, my site's just my cat blog. Why would they want that? I'm just posting stuff about my family's ancestry and we're doing ancestry research, or this is just my journal. It's my photos. It's, it's just my stuff. I'm not important. But when we think about what hackers are doing and the fact that WordPress is powering over 40% of the internet, we can understand what they're up to. They see economies of scale, right? So are they going to target Joomla, which has a very small percentage of, of sites on the internet, or are they going to target the behemoth WordPress, right? They're going to go after what they know, and they're going to learn WordPress because it is so prevalent. And they're after your server's resources and your good domain reputation. So they could go after the New York Times that uses WordPress, or they could go after a hundred cat blogs or a hundred journals or just a hundred WordPress sites. Compromising a hundred sites with zero security, way easier for a hacker than compromising the New York Times that has security professionals looking at the traffic all the time and ensuring that that site is protected. They expect you to have less security on your site. 
We're going to foil those expectations today, however. But they're targeting you because they see opportunity to make money and we're going to stop them. Um, so how do hackers get in? I basically will categorize this in two different ways. First of all, they're looking at poor authentication. Many of the sites that I've helped clean up were compromised because somebody was reusing a password and then that password ends up in a breach into a password database. And then that gets reused. Um, you're, if you're reusing that password across multiple sites, if you've got it on, like, say, for example, you went and bought shoes on a site and that site gets compromised, that password gets exposed. It ends up in one of these hacker password databases. And all they have to do is try it right and so they'll just spray these um these requests of authentication they're trying to log in anywhere what's really terrifying is if you say have a domain name like yourbusiness.com and your email is your name at yourbusiness.com and you're reusing that password to your wordpress site all over the internet they're going to try. They're going to say, okay, let's go see if this is a WordPress site. Let's see if we can log in here. And so they will actually target um, logging in with reused passwords that way. But the majority of these authentication types of hacks are from brute forced passwords that end up in a data breach and then end up just into one of the scripts that, you know, a guy in the basement wearing a hoodie might be using in order to get into WordPress sites. The other thing where we see a lot of problems is through software vulnerabilities. That means a plugin has a specific vulnerability that can very easily be exploited. And if that is easy enough to exploit, then they just spray the internet with requests for that type of plugins vulnerability and see if they can own a site that way. So we'll typically see these in plugins, less so in themes and even less frequently in core. Lots of people will ask me, how secure is WordPress really? And my answer is always as secure as you make it. WordPress core as a whole is typically very secure. We do see patches, but over the past few years, especially the patching of vulnerabilities are very low grade, hard to exploit types of vulnerabilities. Whereas most of the time in plugins, because there's about 60,000 plugins just in the repo alone, plus paid plugins on sites like Code Canyon and wherever, those types of plugins, um, th there's very wide standards. You know, there's some that are incredibly secure and go through rigorous security QA. And then there's some that are just, you know, hey, this was helpful for me. I'll just put it out on the repo and doesn't go through that kind of rigorous testing. The plugins team is very good at, if they know of a security vulnerability, making sure that that is um, remedied as quickly as possible. But 60,000 plugins for a volunteer team, it's a lot. But this is basically how hackers are owning sites. Now, what's at risk really for small businesses? Well, here's some statistics that um, basically tell you what, what we have to to deal with. Like a lot of people will say, oh, well, if I get hacked, I'll just restore from a backup. No big deal, right? Here's the problem. 60% of small companies go out of business within six months of falling victim to a cyber attack. Now, this could be any kind of cyber attack. You know, this isn't necessarily WordPress specific, but the ramifications of an incident can be far reaching. Now, if you're doing commerce on your WordPress site, you are also governed by the payment card industry data security standards. So if someone owns your WooCommerce site and puts a JavaScript carding um, attack or a card attack on one of your payment processing forms and takes that credit card information and sends it off to a hacker where they're then go going to buy camera equipment, that type of thing, the payment card industry is going to want to have a word with you about the security of your site as well. Many jurisdictions require that you notify your users when there's a breach. So if there's a breach that exposes any information, including your customer's information, which is personally identifiable information. If you have users, if, for example, you're doing learning management system and you've got students who are logging in, 
those IP addresses that might be logged, the user email, all of that information is personally identifiable information. And many jurisdictions require that you notify those users. So there are some definite risks. You can just restore from backup, but then you also have some legal requirements and some payment card industry requirements that make things a little complicated. So it's best if we take care of security before the event rather than after. And there's some rewards to doing this as well. Now, this information comes from a study done by AT&T. They found that organizations that had proactive security measures had better business outcomes. They had 24% sales growth over, th over three year period and 20% profit margins. And for those who don't, 6% sale growth and 3% profit margins. So those who think about security actually have better business outcomes. Now I've thought about this as a security professional quite a bit, like what is this really all about? And I think security, no, I know security is a mindset. If you think proactively about security for your business, that has outcomes, right? You're thinking through like, what does this mean for my customers? Um, if I have an incident response plan in place, like I'm going to plan for like, if a hack happens, here are all of the things that I'm going to do. You're not just thinking about your security proactively. You're thinking about your customers. You're thinking about your business. You're thinking about everything associated, everything that every touch point that your business has, you're thinking about that. And I think just getting into that security mindset of like, what is the long-term continuity of my business? If something like this were to happen, I think it changes the way you think about your business. And the side effect of that is that your business is much more successful. So today we're going to talk about, you know, we obviously know that these hackers are after us, that they are just sort of the background noise of the internet. But let's talk about, let's just talk about that mindset of security and let's talk about what we can do. First of all, who's responsible? Who is ultimately responsible for the security of your site? Is it Green Geeks, your hosting provider? Is it the security plugin that you had installed? Or is it ultimately you, the small business owner? Well, having been a small business owner, I think, I think you know, I think you know that ultimately the responsibility is all on you. You can contract out, um, you can have a great hosting provider that's doing a lot of things at sort of that network level in order to protect you and your site. That's great. Uh, you can have great systems and processes. You can have great offer operations or office manager that's taking care of everything for you. But ultimately, when it gets right down to it, it's up to you. Security is your responsibility. It's Green Geek's responsibility where, where they have their scope. It's your employee's responsibility where you define their scope. But ultimately, understanding all of this is really up to you. And the hard thing about that is sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, which is why we're here today, is to educate ourselves on what's going on out there and what tools do you have available to you. So there's a lot that can be done. And I'm going to argue that everyone's responsible for security in some scope or another. I mean, if you're carrying around a cell phone, which we all are, you are carrying around something that's connected to the internet all the time. So there is a level of security responsibility that each of us has at this point in time in our, our, our journey as human beings on the planet. Security is a part of all of that. You can't just trust, oh, security professionals going to handle it. We all need to start thinking about what are the risks and pay attention to what's happening out there. Some of these things might not ever touch your site or touch you personally, but knowing about it and just taking a few simple steps to protect yourself can mean the difference between your business con continuity or your business shutting down after a hack in six months. So, the first thing we need to really do is work on that mindset, and that is preparation. Incident response planning is something that you do before a hack. It is something where you look at, at the potential of what can possibly happen, and it's not necessarily just the website. It is 
your network, if you have a brick and mortar office and you have people, you have a, an actual network there, how is that network being protected? And what happens if there's a breach there? What happens if one of your employees gets fished? What do they have access to? What should they maybe not have access to? Thinking through all of these things prepares you in so many ways because it uncovers all of the vulnerabilities and it's not just software vulnerabilities. We hear about plugin vulnerabilities all the time, but I have sat in rooms where I have talked to people and I'm like, you, your business's greatest vulnerability. It's us, it's people. It's, we get, we get fished. We click on links we shouldn't be clicking on. All of that kind of stuff you take into consideration and you plan for it. You say it's going to happen eventually. And how do we deal with that? Security auditing also, just because you, you, your site hasn't been hacked doesn't mean that it couldn't be hacked. I have people come to me all the time. Can you just take a look at my site? And I'm like, yes, I do that as a security audit. And I'll go thinking I'm never going to, this person knows what they're doing. They're never going to, I'm not going to find anything. And even people that I I believe are good security, um, they have a good security mindset. I'll find something like a backup that is publicly available that's in the root of their website and they didn't know it was there because when they moved sites from one hosting provider to another, they hired somebody to do that and they didn't take a look at anything afterwards and that backup could have been accessed by a malicious actor. So security auditing is good for everyone, even me. I still secure, go through my sites and do a security audit periodically and just look around at the file system and see if there's anything that could be problematic. Being prepared also means having backups and making sure that those backups are not stored with your site, that they're stored someplace else, and that they are protected from like if the site ever did get compromised, that the backups would not be compromised so this way, if you are thinking proactively about security, you're catching these things before the hackers do, and you want to patch those things before the hackers find them. I mean, your website, sure, you can go to HTTP, yourwebsite.com, and you can go visit your website. That's one way of accessing your site. But there are so many other ways, so many other ways that you might not think could have a vulnerability with it. You can have FTP or file transfer protocol as a part of every site. There is file transfer, you know, there's a way to access the file system of the files, the PHP files that run WordPress. Is that password strong? Um, SSH also can have a password. Is that password strong? And if you're not using FTP and SSH, can you shut those down if that's not something that you're using often? Your hosting panel. Is that secure with a very strong password? Is there two-factor authentication set up on that? WP admin. You know, a lot of people are like, how do I hide the login form? If I hide the login form, it's just going to make my site more secure. But remember, there's so many other ways to get in. Um, maybe we just want to keep bots from accessing WP admin, and maybe there's a way of doing that. Um, XML RPC. This is another programmatic way of accessing the back end of your site. And we see a lot of sort of these brute force attacks coming in through XML RPC, and it's just a PHP file in your site, in the typical core site. Maybe we want to shut that off. And there's ways, very easy ways of turning off XML RPC. If you if you have a if you have a plugin that's using XML RPC, which Jetpack is one of the prominent ones that does use that. You wouldn't want to do this. You might want to just have some protections added to it. But if you're not using it, something you can turn off. The REST API is another way of programmatically accessing your site. We want to make sure that's secure. PHP My Admin is a way of accessing the database that is um, houses all of your content, your user information, settings, those types of things. How secure is that? So your website has a lot of different entry points. It's not just that login form. It's not just that HTTP uh, or HTTPS request to get the pages on the front end. There's a lot of different ways that we access our sites that hackers can also get into as well. Let's talk about the OSI model. Crappy image I pulled from the <laughs> I'm like, you know, let's talk about this because our sites do have um, 
basically anything technical, anything on a network has various different layers of um, of access here. We have the application layer, which is WordPress, uh, presentation layer, session layer, transport network, data link, and physical. Physical is going to be where is the server all the way down to the application. Each one of these things is something that we can secure. Now, you as the WordPress site owner, you're probably only thinking about the application, which is great for you to have a good partnership with a great hosting provider that is thinking about all of these other things for you, making sure that you have an SSL certificate, making sure that the physical servers are secure. So this is just another way of looking at things. And when security experts look at an application or look at any kind of security, we are looking at all of these various layers. We want to secure on every single layer, the network, the application, physical security, all of it needs to have security. You can't just install a plugin on your site and say, oh, well, security is all done. As we recall, there's a lot of different aspects that come into play and guess whose responsibility they all are as a site owner? It's yours to at least understand what these things are so that when you contract out with a great hosting provider like Green Geeks, you know that they've got this kind of stuff covered for you. But what things can you do? Let's talk about authentication first, because we did talk about how that's one of the primary ways we see sites getting hacked. Passwords are kind of a mess right now, right? We've got all sorts of smaller sites, bigger sites, all sorts of people who are reusing passwords and then these passwords end up in breaches. I saw a statistic recently that said that like 60% of people are reusing passwords. This night might not be you. You might be like unique passwords everywhere, 20 characters. I've got my password manager. It's locked down. Two-factor authentication is everywhere. But are your users, is everyone in your business making sure that they have unique passwords everywhere? Because if one person is reusing a password, it can be a problem. One quick story um, of an incident that I worked on, and it was a huge website. This was a website that was, when it was hacked, it escalated into the business's back end at, because of because the server wasn't secured. They didn't. There was a bunch of things that went wrong, but it all started with one guy. Let's just call him Joe, and he was using Joe at businessname.com everywhere, and he was using reusing that same password for the WordPress website everywhere. They logged in, were able to basically put some code into the site. There's some PHP code into the site. And because of all of those different layers not being secured, they escalated into the accounting systems and into the customer databases, into the credit card information. This is why security at every touch point, at every layer is so important. important. So those complex long passwords that are unique everywhere, because those are so difficult to manage, I highly recommend a password manager. If you have a small business and people that work for you, get something like 1Password and make sure everybody uses it and that everybody is storing their passwords that are related to the business there and there alone. They're not storing them in their browsers and that everybody is uh, committed to doing that. I also recommend if, you know, putting all of your passwords in one basket, you know, I just say watch that basket very carefully, but there's something called the blind password strategy. So let's say you have long complex passwords in your password manager. And then in your head, you have a four digit code that you put at the end of every single password. So all of the passwords in the password manager are unique. You have your four digit code and complex password, four digit code, Plus, add those together, and that's what you put into the websites. That way, if that password manager is ever compromised, like what happened with LastPass last year, uh, your passwords are still kind of safe. So, blind password strategy. You heard it here. <laughs> two-factor authentication. 28% of people use two-factor authentication. I would like to get that number higher. <laughs> um Use an authenticator app. Make sure it's a reputable one like Google Authenticator. And wherever you can, use two-factor authentication. This is not just for your WordPress site. 
you will need a plugin to do something like that. I highly recommend using something like iTheme Security, um, rebranding into Solid Security, which has two-factor authentication. But there's a number of free plugins that will do this as well, uh, making sure that you just have that second factor. If for some reason whatsoever, even with a complex password, if something did ever end up in a breach, making sure that you're, you have that second factor of authentication. Now, one of the things I love about iThemes security, which is rebranding into solid security, is passkeys. Passkeys is a new technology that is based upon, well, it's actually a new implementation of an old technology. So if you have ever used um, PGP to encrypt a message that you might be emailing to someone, you have their public key and they have their private key. And as long as you have the public key and encrypt something with that public key, you can send a message and whoever's got the private key can decrypt that message. So this public private key encryption, really cool stuff has been around for a long time, has not been like, um, has not been exploited. It's still, it's still the principle of it is still protective. And now they are implementing something called pass keys with WebAuthn. iThemes and Solid Security is the, the first thing, the first uh, plugin that has brought this to WordPress. We basically are using something like a biometric with your computer and your browser to authenticate. Pass keys can't get fished. They can't get brute forced. It is going to start... Uh, you can now use it with your Google account. So if you want to protect your Google account with a pass key, you can do that. Uh, Stripe has it, I believe, is it Stripe or Square? I believe it's Stripe has it as a second factor. So instead of a 2FA code, you can use a pass key for a second factor instead of um, a 2FA code. So you still log in with your username and password, but you can set up a pass key and use that for your second factor. Um, this is going, pass keys are going to start coming to all sorts of things. PayPal is implementing it. And iThemes is the first one to really bring it to WordPress. So I would highly recommend using something like that um, as a way of protecting authentication. Um, I also just think you should start using it everywhere because it's a really super cool technology that has been tested and tried over a long period of time and now is starting to come to all sorts of web authentication. I also highly recommend that we implement the principle of least privilege. Let's say, for example, you have a brick or mortar business and you've got various people who do various things on the website. Jane in the front office often has to look up things on the on WooCommerce, for example, but doesn't necessarily need access to all of the plugins on your site. Does Jane get a store man manager role, or does Jane get an admin role? I would recommend that your website has a separate login for each person who needs to access it, and that the principle of least privilege, which means we only give access to the things that the person needs in order to do their job, is the way we handle things. In this way, Jane isn't accidentally deleting a plugin uh, Jane does not have control over um, necessarily all the content on the site. She's just managing the store, looking some things up, those types of things. Um, we we do this because if Jane's account is ever compromised, it limits the impact that a hacker would have if they were be, to be able to exploit something like that. It also is just makes things a lot easier. Jane, you know, let's not complicate Jane's life. She doesn't need to know about plugins just yet. Just keep her life nice and simple. Um, protecting software. Now you've probably heard this a thousand times. I'm going to say it again. Keep your software updated. Plugins, themes, core. If you have an FTP application on your computer that you're accessing files, make sure that that's updated. Uh, I also recommend that you don't store your passwords for FTP on your computer in the FTP password or the FTP application. Keep that in your password manager. In that way, if something ever were to happen to your computer, that FTP application. I have actually cleaned a site and found the intrusion, found where it was coming in, and it was coming in through somebody's computer at a company that their computer got compromised. Somebody owned that computer and was able to log into the website through the FTP application because the password was actually stored in that FTP application. 
Make sure your browsers are always updated. There's all sorts of chatter around about session hijacking and things like that. And I don't know, over the I've seen so many Chrome browser uh, zero day, which is a, a vulnerability that has not yet been uh, patched, but is an active exploitation. I've seen so many of them. If you see that your Chrome browser needs an update, update your browsers and keep your system OS, whether you're on Macs or Windows, the, the days of, oh, Macs don't get hacked, far beyond us now. <laughs> They're very behind us. Macs do, in fact, get hacked. They do indeed have zero days. So you will see alerts uh, around um, about all, you know, your, your phone needs an update, your computer needs an update. It's it's we're in a place now where it's time for each one of us to take responsibility for those things. And as soon as you see that an update is available, you update your stuff. You go get your kids and say, stop, get off of TikTok. It's time to update your phone. If you want to keep your phone um, and keep TikTok, it's time for all of us to really take these kinds of things seriously. Also, another thing, software that's on your computer or software that's in your WordPress site, if you're not using it, don't just deactivate it, delete it. There was a vulnerability a few years ago in a plugin called File Manager. And it's really kind of a cool plugin. You plug it in and it basically shows you your website files just like you would see on your computer. It's a little like window and there's directories that look like little folders. Super helpful plugin. Lots of people have it installed on their sites. I can guarantee you they're not using it all the time. Well, there was a vulnerability found in the file manager plugin that was pretty severe. And even if you didn't have it active, you just had it installed and you activated it when you needed it, just having it installed, it was exploitable. That vulnerability was exploitable. So to reduce the surface area that attackers can exploit, don't just remove or don't just delete or deactivate, <laughs> actually delete the software that you are not using just to keep your site nice and tidy and safe. All right, we're going to talk about functional isolation. Um, this uh, cPanel, there was, I have seen so many people put so many sites in a cPanel. The worst I've ever heard of was 50. The worst one I ever cleaned up was 30. And one site gets hacked in that cPanel that has 30 sites in it. All 30 sites get messed up. All 30 sites were redirecting to a bad part of the internet that was installing malware on people's computers. Um, you want one site per hosting account. I'm pretty sure Green Geeks, you guys set things up that way. So each site is functionally isolated. I would also argue that each site, each WordPress site should be singular function. The more plugins, the more stuff you have in there, not only does it affect performance, it also increases the surface area for attack. So let's say you have your commerce site and you have your marketing site and you have, you know, LMS where you're doing some, some courses and things like that. I would argue that those should be separate sites. Um, if like your LMS is rather small and you're also using WooCommerce to sell those, like I could see how you could combine those and just like be very careful about everything you're installing in there. But if you're doing like a membership site and all of these different things, each one of those functions um, has a surface area to it. If you have a lot of users logging into it, you want to functionally isolate that away from something that's much more sales oriented type of thing. And there's definitely programmatic ways that you can tie those things together. But from a security standpoint, I would recommend isolating each site based on its function. Again, making sure your backups are off server. And there's nothing worse in this world than having a backup and needing to use it and then finding it's corrupted and that it didn't back up properly. So make sure that your backup processes are working. I know Green Geeks covers this for you and they have regular backups you don't have to worry about, but you might want to test restoration every once in a while because ultimately, yes, Green Geeks is doing that but it's your responsibility. Maybe you want to go check up on them and make sure that all your backups are okay. Just test, you know, this isn't something you have to do like every week, but like maybe every quarter, every time you're doing a security audit, that's a good time to test backup restoration, making sure that you've got everything. The worst thing in the world is like, oh, it's, well, it's backing up all of this, but we have this other thing and it's not grabbing that. It's better to know ahead of time and fix it. So this, just include that as a part of your auditing procedure. 
um, protecting access. I just believe Cloudflare. I love Cloudflare. <laughs> Cloudflare should be in front of everything. Cloudflare stops a lot of that you know, background noise of the internet. Now, are they blocking super targeted attacks? Probably not really, but that, you know, brute force logins or, you know, the spray and pray background noise of hackers just setting their bots up to go attack whatever they can get. It really reduces that. It also is great for performance. Get to know what a firewall is. Cloudflare has a cloud-based firewall that is external to your site. So because they're blocking all of that stuff, it allows for all of the resources of your computer or of your server to be more accessible to the people who are actually, you know, customers, prospects, students, those types of things, people you want on your site. I also really love Cloudflare's turnstile. It's like CAPTCHA, but I find it to be just amazing. This is great for... Your forms, all the spam submissions, comments, um, there's ways of, uh, there's a turnstile plugin. Uh, it's pretty simple and you can put it on all of your forms. It's also great to put on WooCommerce because there are carding attacks that happen. People, um, these hackers will get credit cards that stolen credit cards. And before they go try to buy like expensive camera equipment that they're going to sell on eBay, they want to test which cards work. So they come find a website like ours, small business website with not much security on it, perhaps, and they do a carding attack and they'll put in all of, you know, a hundred cards and at the lowest dollar amount. So it's not like triggering any kind of, um, you know, the card processor looking at something, and, but it's a pain in the rear to clean up. So turnstile is great for those types of things to block those things on your WooCommerce processing forms as well. Fast detection is going to get a fast response. Now, if your site gets hacked and you don't notice for five days, a hacker basically owns your site. There's a lot of damage they can do. Your reputation gets damaged in the search engine result pages if it's like full of spam or you're redirecting to a bad part of the internet or you have phishing pages on your site. The faster you know there's a problem, the faster you can fix it and the faster you can recover your business and make sure there's no problem. So Green Geeks has real-time scanning for file changes and for malware and they do network monitoring I would also use something like iThemes or Solid Security there because they'll give you file change notifications as well. So great hosting provider and a great simple plugin that helps you make good security decisions. Those are things that I would really recommend just because you want to be notified. It's your responsibility to take action on all these things. So why not get the news as fast as possible? All right. That's about it. That's what I've got. Hopefully I've got enough time. Yeah, we've got time for questions, don't we? Now I've got a free a freebie for you. If you go to zant.com green geeks, uh, not only can you get these slides for this presentation, but I have a security audit checklist that you can grab as well if you sign up for my newsletter because my newsletter is fun and it's all the security news, everything that you need to know anyway. So you just go to zant.com slash green geeks and you can get that security audit checklist as well. Um, you can, it's, it's, you don't have to sign up for the newsletter. You can just say, hey, send it to me. Mm -hmm. But if you sign up for my newsletter, hey, we can stay friends and stuff. So thank you. So <laughs> I try to um, keep it fun. Yeah. As always, um, I wanted to go through a few of the, the questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, that have been people have been asking in the Q and A. <laughs> so um, the first one is actually more of generic one. A K Ross is asking if uh, we can get a like a professional development certificate from attending the webinar. Uh, actually, we don't offer that. I understand what. Um, they're asking, but we really don't have a certification for this. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then also asking if your PowerPoint slides are going to be available as a PDF download. We could do yeah. that, right? Yeah, they're actually, let me um, let me just load up that Zant. If you go to Zant.com, um, Green Geeks, uh, let me just double check it. I didn't check the link, but yeah, the slides are there. So I can, um, if you... Yeah, just green geeks. Oh, one okay. Word. You can so the, the, the link there. that you gave everybody. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, we have a question here from Noel. Do you recommend enabling out of date on plugins? Actually, from a security standpoint, you would think I would be here saying, yes, let's auto update everything so we get those security releases as soon as possible. Um, however, some plugins I'll do that for. Like I know who the developer is and I know how I've implemented it. I trust that there's not going to be a problem. There's not going to be a plugin conflict. There's I, I'll auto update those types of things. For everything else, no, I don't because WordPress develop, I mean, I've been on the software side of things for WordPress for a long time. There are so many hosting providers. There are so many versions of PHP and MySQL. There are so many different variations of different plugins. Like I really feel sorry for those big plugins like, like Yoast and some of the other ones where they're like on 9 million sites. They have 9 million possible variations of how that that's being used. And I feel so sorry for their QA people. Ultimately, here's my recommendation for for anything. You should have a staging server hosted not in the same space as your production server. And this is how I update. So I go to the staging server. I update the plug in there. I go look at all of the important pages. Um, if it has anything to do with commerce, I do a checkout. Looks okay. All right. Now I'll update on production, the live site, and then I'll go through those same type of checks. Ultimately, I would love to say auto update all the things. Sounds wonderful, right? And from a security standpoint, you want those updates as soon as possible. I wish there was a way that I could say any point release or any security release is auto updated and anything that's like a major release, I want to handle that and have it be in, an, in the network world they have on servers. There's attended updates, which means you're watching what happens when it updates. And then you can set up unattended updates that's just like, oh, the patch is available, just update whenever. I would personally like to to have a way of like more granularly controlling that for WordPress. But at this point, my recommendation is if your site is making you money, like you wake up in the morning with like, oh, look how much I made while I was sleeping. Put the effort in to do attended updates, watch the updates, test them on a sta staging server before you put them on, on a production site. But, you know, if it's just your blog, if it's the cat blog, for example, eh, auto update, I'll fix it later, that kind of thing. It's really dependent on each individual site and how important it is to you and like feeding your family. Okay, thank you. Um, I have here a question from Yoko. My site is on Shopify. Do you have any advice specific to Shopify? Yeah, Shopify is like a different animal, right? Because it's a it's a hosted um, solution. It's not something where you're like not maintaining the code base. They do all of that for you. You still have a login though. And so I would still use like a very long complex password using a password manager. And um, if they have, I, I don't use Shopify, so I don't know, but I'm going to assume they have two-factor authentication available for you. Um, so making sure you do that. And then if you have a lot of different people who work for you that are logging into that site, really analyze what they need. So if there's different um, roles available to you on Shopify and somebody only needs to log in and print labels or something like that, like that's all they get access to. The principle of least privilege is only give access for what they need in order to do the job that you've assigned them to do. Right. Um, let's see. We have a question from Strong. Uh, I own greenjobs.com. That's a great domain name. Yeah, <laughs> greenjobs.com. Does storing resumes and other user data make us more vulnerable to data yeah. breaches? Not more vulnerable, but you have you have an asset there that's really important to protect, and that's your user information, right? You don't want any IP addresses or personally identifiable information exposed. So you have something more valuable. It's not just a cat blog, right? So I would definitely make sure that you have all of the protections in place, do that security auditing on a regular basis. Um, it, your, your security is heightened. You know, the thing is, is like the more successful or the more, um, the more community you have, the more you're doing with WordPress, the more of an asset it is, right? And so like 
your shed in the backyard is the what is it it's the mower like who cares okay somebody gets in and steals the mower i'll buy another mower but somebody gets into your house and you know steals all your jewelry or gets into your safe that type of thing you're going to secure your house in a much different way so everything there's a security continuum right whereas the most usable thing in the internet is the thing that anybody can get into and the most secure thing is a computer that's encased in cement and buried six feet underground. It's not usable at all. So you have to decide where on that continuum, really usable or really secure, where is this asset in terms of like, what is the risk profile for this asset? Like if somebody gets into your user information and gets personally identifiable information, there's all sorts of breach laws, GDPR, California, Nevada, like all kinds of different jurisdictions have rules that you have to follow in terms of breach notification. You should be familiar with that if you have user data and have an incident response plan in place so you know exactly what you need to do should that ever be exposed. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see what else we have, Nancy. What are your thoughts on security plugins? I use MyCare Blog Vault company, but recently there was an article criticizing they're not very effective. Yeah, okay. So the security plugin that you're gonna use is going to be the best one that you're gonna, but, but have realistic expectations of it. So let's say for example, you have a plugin vulnerability and somebody gets into your site and it was a zero day. You, there was nothing you could have done, it just, it happened, right? They get into your site and they go over to any of the security plugins that scan for malware and they modify those files, those PHP files. So their, their malware, it, everybody else's malware, we'll show that, but my malware, I don't want this, I don't want Malcare or any of the other security scanning plugins to see my malware. They have access to your site. They have access to your PHP files. Therefore, and I've seen it. I've cleaned up sites that have basically opted their malware out of the scanner because it's exposed, right? PHP, they've owned PHP basically. So any PHP file can get modified. This is one of the things I like about hosting providers like Green Geeks and some of the other ones out there that have malware scanning at the server level. So a hacker gets into the site, they can change all of the PHP. They've got nothing on the malware scanner up here at the server level that's running at as root or whatever. It's not this user down here. So I would rely on server level malware scanning, but some plugins, like I'm not sure, I don't use Malcare, um, but some of the plugins that'll just like let you know, hey, a file changed. And then you can use that as an alert in conjunction with malware scanning that's happening at the server level. That's that's the route that I would go. You know, the, security is such a, like, Six years ago, security plugins were all great. I mean, I did see the malware that opted out. It's, you know, from from scanners um, quite some time ago. That's been happening for quite a while. But security is such a cat and mouse game, right? The security, the, one of the things I love about it is like they're always up to some, what are they doing now, right? It's always something interesting to learn, always something new happening, but it requires us to stay on stay on point with it. We can't just like, oh, well, the security plugins got that handled. No, we have to understand the risks associated. So the, those articles that did come out, you know, criticizing PHP based malware scanners that um, Calvin Elkin, who is the researcher that did that, a friend of mine. Um, yeah, he's right. It is, it is a risk. So you can use them, but I would also, you know, rely on a good hosting provider like Green Geeks that does do that malware scanning at the server level. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a question here of uh, something that just really happened. What do you think from Strong King? What do you think when you hear of massive hacks like MGM recently? Sounds like executives were investing in cybersecurity. Yeah. Well, they question. had a. Yeah, I was going to do a video about that. I, my YouTube channel, I do a weekly video about security. I was going to do a video about that, but then I decided to do one about SIM swapping because I felt like that was more useful. But MGM is a super interesting case. So they got I had an initial hack in 2019. I'm wondering, like, why did you guys do something, right? Yeah. Oh, so the the information that's coming out, the advanced the APT, Advanced Persistent Threat 
hacking group that's come out and claimed responsibility for MGM said that it was a 10 minute call, social engineering call. They called somebody who had access to something and that was the initial breach. Um, and so they're claiming that it was a 10 minute social engineering call that got them into MGM systems, but they shut down so much. I don't think that so much got hacked, but something happened. And we don't know the full story at this point, but I am watching it. But I think a lot of that, I mean, if it was my network and I saw like breach number one happen, like what could possibly, I'm shutting this down. I'm, they're not going to get this. But like they shut down the rooms. They shut down all the casino, like the slot machine, like so many different systems that I would imagine are on separate networks and isolated from one another. But like the target hack that happened in 2013, that hack happened because of an HVAC vendor who had his laptop that was owned by a hacker, plugged it into the network somewhere with Target. But it took like 10 days of them being in Target's systems for them to eventually get to the point where they compromised the point of 800 point of sale cash registers across the United States. Hackers are very patient they are very persistent. They are, they're kind of like kids and very creative. I find them to be very, very fascinating, which is why I love security so much because they, you think it's this way and they find a way to show you that no, it's not. So uh, it's a very interesting case. I'm definitely something that I'm, I'm watching, but it it's, there's lessons for all of us in it. Just because you think, oh, well, it's just, it's just Jane in the front office, her computer got hacked. Well, what could possibly happen? Where can that, you know, fail over into other things? Or it's just my WordPress site. It's just my blog. It could be the first bellwether, the first canary in the coal mine of something else major that happens. So, yeah, thank you. That was really cool to, you know, to know more details about that hack. Um, then we have a question from... Lourdes, uh, is WooCom WooCommerce is safe? A little bit. Yeah, WooCommerce, um, WooCommerce, the, everybody who is on the WordPress team, the .org core team, the WooCommerce core team, they just patched a vulnerability. Uh, I think it's Word WooCommerce 8.1.1, I think. Um, but it wasn't like a major I think it was information leakage type of thing, but they take security very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. They have a bug bounty program and how security research works. You have a white hat hacker, white hat hacker who looks at software and, oh, well, here's a vulnerability. And they'll go and contact the vendor and say, you know, are you the person I talked to about this? And they establish a secure channel between the white hat hack, white hat hacker and the developer who's in charge of that software, they have a proof of concept that they show, like, here's how this hack works and how I was able to exploit this. The developer fixes it, sends the fix back to that hacker. They test it. Yep, that fixed it. Or no, I can still do this. And they have that communication back and forth. The developer patches it. They release the patch out to all of the customers. And then about a month usually is what I see. Uh, then that white hat hacker will um, write up about the proof of concept as an educational tool to show other developers, hey, this is one vulnerability and it could happen in other places that are using this particular programmatic methodology. And so we use it as an educational tool to up-level everyone in terms of security research and in terms of more secure code. So that's yeah. typically how it works. Thank you. Cindy is asking, what are rules, considerations for personal data collected from others, such as for sending newsletters? Yeah, so sending a newsletter, um, if you're collecting... If you're collecting any person emails and IP addresses, you think, oh, that's nothing, right? That's co considered personally identifiable information, and that's governed by some of these breach laws, GDPR, anything. So you'll hear PII a lot, and that is something that you need to safeguard. If anybody gives you that information, it's something that you need to protect. If you're in the healthcare world, you'll hear about HPI, which is healthcare personally, bleh, is it HPI? health personal information. And then there's this HIPAA thing. And that's like this huge, there's even more rules associated with that. So if you're in healthcare, even a dentist's office, and they're taking in a form of like, oh, I just want an appointment. 
personally identifiable information, if they're putting anything in there, oh, well, I had this filling out, like all of that stuff is health related information. So it's something that, you know, if you're a web developer and doing that kind of stuff, something to be aware of. Yeah, thank you. And Marie is asking, um, she's curious about how to stop being spammed by my own email address. I think she's referring to those emails that you receive that someone has oh. all your information. You know, if you've been on the internet for any length of time, your email has been in a breach and it gets picked up by spammers. And really at this point, the only thing that can, we can really do is ensure we have good spam filtering for our own personal email. Um, I do, you know, as I'm consulting with people, I do recommend like if you have you have marketing emails like, oh, I can't, what cute pants, Lululemon, <laughs> that kind of email. Do you want it to go into the, do you want that same email for your bank accounts and those kinds of things? You know, maybe you, you have that continuum of security for like what you're doing with your own personal information as well. And think about, you know, what things do I really want to keep secure and what, you know, like send me a sale on those cute pants. You know, that's a completely different thing, right? <laughs> that's true. I get a lot of those emails too. So yeah, I think we're all in the same place with that. Um, another question from Mike. Um, is there an all-in security plugin that you would really recommend? All-in security plugin? Yeah, the security plugin that's easiest for you to use. I am at this point, I am affiliated with, um, because I'm part of the Stellar group. So iThemes and Plus Timothy uh, Jacobs, he's a, a core contributor for WordPress, and he is just one of my favorite people. He and I can get on a call. Oh, we just need to talk about, oh my gosh, that's three hours of security talk. How did we do that? Um, he is very, very, he's the one that brought pass, key, pass keys to WordPress and pass keys to iTheme security. He is one of the most brilliant minds in WordPress and WordPress security. I would recommend using iTheme security because of Timothy. He is an amazing human being. Um, it's not going to do malware scanning, but you've got green geeks for that. Make sure your host is doing that at that server level and make sure use the security plugin that you use would be the one that helps you make the best decisions about your site. So is it making you good decisions about authentication, a second factor of authentication, pass keys? Great. That's a great tool to use. Is it notifying you if there's a file change? Great. Also rely on the server level scanning to tell you about those types of things. Um, so whatever's easiest for you to use, I'm partial to that just because I'm exposed to it so much. There's other great ones out there, but whatever one's going to be easiest for you to use, that's not, um, just don't, th this whole marketing thing of, oh, well, all you need is the security plugin and it's going to do everything for you. Remember that graphic I showed you about your website? There are so many ways in and it's up to you. It's your responsibility to not say, oh, well, my security can't handle FTP can't handle your hosting panel. You are responsible for all of those other things. So don't ever get into this mindset of like, oh, well, or or even I've got Cloudflare on it, everything's safe. No, there's lots of aspects to look at. Yeah, that is true. Um, Emily is asking uh, if you could uh, compare WordFence to item security. How does that compare? Yeah, so uh, WordFence, it has... WordFence has a firewall that is tied into WordPress, so it's got some benefits with that, um, but it is doing all of that work within the application, so that malware scanning is happening within the application. Um, I think security does not, they're, kind, they're working with patch stack on eventually having a firewall there. Um, they both have vulnerability assessments. They're going to both alert you, hey, there's a vulnerability here. Um, it's just different. There are different plugins that do different things. So um, either one of them is going to work out well for you. I'm just, I'm partial to iThemes because I think it handles that authentication aspect of it with pass keys, especially much better. Makes sense. Uh, let's see, Noel. Uh, we have a couple of more minutes. If you have a couple of more minutes, just a couple yeah, more questions. I, yeah, yeah. Do you have a checklist for what to look for when reviewing a plugin update for non-techies? Checklist. Yeah. yeah. So what I do if I'm looking at a plugin update, like, okay, I log into my dashboard and I see all of, okay, there's 
my son's website. I just logged in because he's got WooCommerce and I'm like, oh, there's a patch and I bet you he hasn't done it yet. And I went into his website and I'm like, sure enough, he hasn't done it yet. So I patched it and it's like 18 plugins that need an update. And a lot of them mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with. So here's what I do on that plugin dashboard. It says check for, um, you can see details. There's one thing that goes and it pops up a window and it shows you the page for the repo and there's um, the development tab will show you something called a change log. So it'll, it'll tell you like in the most recent version, okay, it's a fix. It's a fix. It's a fix. Okay. It's just fixing these things. I'll just update that one. But if there's a lot of features associated, like if there's a lot of new things in there, um, well, for my son's site, I just like tell him, Hey, you got to fix this. I'm not going to break your site. Um, but if it's your site, you're doing this on a staging server and you're doing it once a week, right? But you're going and you're looking and saying, okay, is this a fix? Is this like version number 3.9.1 and it's just like a fix of a bunch of things? Or is it version 4.0 that's got all of these new features and everything in it? Um, so those I wait on. I'll wait, like if it's a 4.0 type of thing, I'll wait until the 4.0.1 comes out and maybe like, maybe I'm not seeing any chatter that there's any problems. I'll go look at like all the support requests on the repo. It looks like this one's okay. But like for major releases, those are not going to have security patches in them. Those are going to be functional releases. We added this new feature. We added this, all of these new things. That's where you typically see lots of breaks and things. So I will always like wait a little bit on those types of things, but like a point release security fix, boom, that's going right away, that type of thing. So that's kind of my strategy for doing updates. And if it's a really important site, it's happening on staging before it happens on production. Yeah, great. That's a great suggestion. Um, another question here um, from Lourdes again. I have a site hacked and I wouldn't mind to do it again. To clean it, it would be enough to install a new template and setting all again. Um, oh, so. you've got a hacked site. You have to assume everything about that site and anything else stored within that directory where your site is. Um, even if you have another site in there, everything's polluted. Assume it's all, so zip up that, go to a contain, you know, either download it or do it on a different server because you're going to assume the hacker's still in there. Just assume that because I've cleaned a site where it's just like, what are you, how'd you get in again, right? That kind of thing, <laughs> because yeah. there's a vulnerability still there, right? So you're cleaning it all up, but the vulnerability is still there. So you want to take it over, clean up, get all the back doors out of it in a controlled environment. Um, I know a lot, like Word fonts will go through and um, you can repair files and things like that, but you have to assume the hacker's still in there. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, trying to clean up a hacked site on that server. I am going to do a course eventually on how to clean up hacked sites, just that's going to be like 40 hours of me recording on like how to do mm -hmm. it. There's a lot to it, but I do have a strategy. And that first strategy, back it up, copy it to a controlled environment, clean it up there, copy the clean files back to that server, swap out, and then patch. So that's basically how it'll work. That'd be great. <laughs> Let us know when you have that course. Yeah. Uh we have here Nazi, I hope I'm saying the name correct. Is it advisable to use more than one security plugin? No, just do no. one. Yeah, choose one and stick with it. Stick Otherwise, with it. if they're trying to do the same thing, like for example, if you have two of them that have the same firewall, they're going to conflict and cause problems. And security, if they have a scanner, they tend to take a lot of resources. So you just definitely don't want them both scanning at the same time, looking for malware or whatever they're doing. Um, so just choose a plugin and stick with it. Most of the major ones are all really good. You just have to choose the one that's got the features that you're going to use to help notify you when there's a problem. Okay. Yeah. So, no. Uh, Noel is asking, what do you recommend to deter email phishing? <laughs> a... Yeah. Phishing is a, it's a huge problem. If any of you are running Facebook pages for your brands or your companies right now, your your messenger, your meta messenger or business suite or whatever. I don't know about you, but the ones that I help manage are getting hammered by phishing attempts or <sighs> phishing. It's a big problem. It's a huge problem right now. Never click on a suspicious link. Suspect everything, um, especially anything associated with something of value. 
um, if they are putting any kind of pressure on you. A lot of them that come in, you'll be like, um, I've seen a lot that it's putting somebody on guard. It's like, something's wrong. Something's wrong with your products. Your products suck. You're, you know, they, they start putting like a, a small business owner on defense. And then it's like, see, click this link and you'll see what problems I'm having. And already you're like feeling stressed and they put you into that sort of emotional state and all hacking. It's social engineering. It is a psychological game that they are tricking you into feeling powerless. And it's your job to look at this and stay powerful. Because you are powerful. And as long as you stay in that place of, of power, you are not giving your power away to these hackers. Don't click the links. Ask for more information. Ask questions. Suspect everything. I love that. Um, Mackenzie is asking if you have any resources you recommend for staying up to date, like sites uh, where this article I posted on, besides when you newsletter, your newsletter you were mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, it, other... um, you know, things that are really great uh, where I get my information, the, the every single security provider, iThemes, Patch Stack, WordFence, they all have their vulner weekly vulnerability reports. And I'll just kind of look and see which ones are, am I using any of them? Um, so those are all great sources. But on Facebook, the the admin bar is a great group for anybody in WordPress, because if anything's going on, those guys are talking about it. Um, so I'll see like, hey, this thing is happening. And um, there's a, a number of security experts in there as well, friends of mine. The admin bar is a really great resource. There's a number of them. Um, Gridpane has a self-hosted group and there's some security talk that happens in there. Um, just like, but subscribe to all of the security vendors and subscribe to my newsletter because I'm only going to talk about the stuff that I where I really feel like it's something this isn't just interesting me this is something that you can use right now so make sure you're on subscribe to that because uh yeah and it, but I also talk about like other stuff in WordPress it's not just all you know me dorking out about security which I have been want to do but it's WordPress news and and things like that too marketing stuff too I'm very interested in the world of marketing because it's growth hacking right so hacking any hacking stuff we have two person. more quickie quick because yeah. we're uh, kind of like running out of time uh, from Sarah I have tried using 2FA with WordFence and items before it ended up blocking up our bots that manage communications between WooCommerce and chip station so our packers were not getting orders do you have any oh. tips for implementing 2FA that doesn't block the good bots that operate with my store That's right a... um I'm not sure exactly. There's, it's probably a programmatic link. You might need to add authentication. If that's happening, it might be Jetpack, XML, RPC. You might need to opt that out of 2FA or I think there's a setting for the, that programmatic link. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a way. And both of those organizations, iThemes and, and WordFence, they're support people. You know, I've worked, I worked at WordFence yeah. before and now being associated <laughs> with iThemes. I know the support people and I know they're all amazing and they will go above and beyond to make sure you're taken care of. So that's what they're there for, this kind of thing. Great. That's a good suggestion. Uh, and then finally, from Yashwant, some plugin get failed. What to do next, I guess, if a plugin failed? I'm going to write that down because that is a good, uh, that's a good video of like how to, how to figure out what happened with, uh, with something that fails or breaks your site, like how to troubleshoot that. And it's going to be different for every single one, right? But there's some troubleshooting things you can do. Your access logs and your error logs on your server uh, are going to be your friends in trying to figure out exactly what's wrong there. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kathy. Um, I think we have to, um, yeah. we're, out, we're out of time. You know me, I'll talk forever. <laughs> we, you know, we love you, we do. Um, love you too. And so, <laughs> um, I guess um, we will be in touch. We will send everybody the recording uh, probably in a few days. Um, and then um, also please everyone, if you're interested in other, other subjects other than security, we have, um, our website, greengeeks.com slash webinars. 
we list all our webinars there. We have one coming up on marketing and, and sustain AI and marketing sustainability. So that's going to be interesting. And then other WordPress are coming up. So everybody Amazing. look out for our emails or go to greenx.com says webinars. And other than that, we hope to see you, Kathy, soon. Yeah. Come back to another webinar in the future. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love and to. We'll, and we'll see you at the work camp, I'm sure. <laughs> and thank you, Erica, for your help. Oh, always. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. Hey, Nana. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon. We'll see everyone soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.